Here's a simple pressure sensitive plate or mat that you can make in about 10 minutes. And it's just a sandwich of aluminum foil and paper towels. Now, now bear with me where you see how effective this thing is. So if I use the capacitance from this as the capacitor in an oscillator, little, here's a little CMOS oscillator. And here it is on the, on the breadboard if you're interested. And you, you will see what this thing can do. Now I'm, I'm making this as a uh, pressure sensor under, under a doormat to detect trick-or-treaters, to trigger a Halloween sequence. But you could make, uh, I mean, this has a lot of applications. You could make musical stairs or uh, a, key, a big keyboard, like in that movie Big. So let me, let me show you this. Listen to the uh, tone. No pressure. A huge capacitance change when you apply pressure. Now it really is pressure that's doing it, not like not like the skin capacitance. If I put a book on here, you'll see pressure. So let me show you this a different way. I can just directly measure the capacitance with a uh, LCR meter, if I can find it. There we go. There we go, about two nanofarads, or two, uh, one and a half nanofarads. to three, well, that's doubling, capacitance doubles. <laughs> I press it. See that? Very easy. You can very easily determine when, for example, somebody is standing on it. <laughs> now, what really the application you want is can we sense this? How many components do I need to sense this with an Arduino? Uh, it turns out you need one. one. One capacitor. So I'll show you this and I'll explain the circuit. Now watch the watch the lead. Okay, someone steps on it. Lead turns on. Let's see if I can block the light and help. Step on it. Lead turns on. Easily, easily detects. Even if there's a, uh, if it's under a doormat, let's say. See, lead turned on. It detected the doormat. Step on it. Lead turns on. Easy. So what this circuit is... Ah, where's my other... This is a capacitance, Arduino capacitance meter from this blog, Jonathan Nethercott's blog. And here's, here's the URL if you're interested. That's where, where it's... I got the idea for the capacitance measurement. We measure the capacitance in two steps. First, we clear the capacitance in the mat, and we clear a reference capacitor by closing these, effectively closing these switches. Step two, apply five volts to the two capacitors in series. And what will happen is the charge on the capacitors has to end up the same. So the voltage across them, the voltage across each VC and VREF here will be proportional to the, the capacitance ratio. And you can work through the equations and come up with, well, the capacitance based on the, the analog to digital converter values that you read in the Arduino. It's very, very simple. I've modified uh, Jonathan's sketch so that it, it's self-calibrating. So what it does is it takes a, a running average of the capacitance. And if there's a change in, if there's an increase by 20%, then it detects the capacitance. Also, there's a, there's a lockout time. That's why uh, it didn't register that right there. And 
I'm artificially extending the on time. I mean, that's, that's for the intended application. Now, I think there's a size limit that you can make these because the, the capacitance increase is proportional to like your hand or your foot. So you don't want to make them too big. So to, to kind of deal with that, you know, the, the, the Arduino has multiple analog inputs. So the sketch I have running on here will, will sense three of these. Now let me show you how to, how to make one. I'll draw it with some markers. So let's say brown, paper towel on the bottom. Electrode. Another paper towel. Second electrode. Another paper towel. Now we just, this is one piece of tin foil, so we just wrap it around like that. Another paper towel. We'll do the same thing with the second electrode. And finally, the top paper towel like this. And then you just need some connecting wires. And for connecting wires, I'm just soldering to, to the aluminum foil. And I'll show you how to do that. Now, why I think this works so well is the, uh, the paper towel that you, th you want to use, you want fluffy and patterned paper towels with big ridges in them. So if you think of the paper towel has like a big ridge, something like this in it, then we have one electrode up here. another electrode or plate down here. If you think of these getting pressed in, these edges, when, when the edges go by, I think there's a huge increase in uh, surface area, more than just the, the plate parallel plates becoming closer together. I think it's these ridges are, are creating a huge effect. So you definitely want to use like premium paper towels, something, something with a pattern in it. I've tried foam and fabric and other things. Really, paper towels work the best. Now, the other thing that will happen is, I mean, they do age. As, as the paper towel compresses with time, it becomes less and less springy. So the capacitance change will decrease over time. But, you know, for one night on Halloween, for my mat, my front door mat, it will work fine. Uh, so I'll make one of these. Let me show you how. Pass it to plate number one. And put it about here. I'm going to cut the, the paper towel to about the right size. Actually, you could probably do the cutting at the end. Number two, oops, I can't have a short in it. There we go. On this one, we need a little space. So it's not quite as wide as the top and bottom plates. kind of center it. Okay, electrode number two. This one over here.
And then we'll wrap around the first electrode. Yeah, it looks kind of ugly. It doesn't really matter. Wrap this guy around. Now let me see if I can get this centered a little bit better. Yeah, see, I went all the way to the edge. That wasn't good. All right, good enough. That's about it. Trim. Well, I won't do that. Let me show you how to solder the wires on now. So what you need to do that is a high-powered soldering iron and some uh, thermal, you know, so something that you can do the soldering to. You don't want to use wood, it'll burn it. Uh, I'll do it in this corner right here. And you just need like regular, I'm just using 6040 regular solder. And some wires. Let's see, tin the wires. All right, now here's the trick for soldering aluminum foil. Use a lot of heat. Melt the solder on the aluminum foil, you know, get it nice and hotter, and, and you'll see the flux melting out of the solder. You definitely want to see that. More heat, just wait, and then you just wrap around, move the soldering iron around a little bit, and what will happen is you, you scrape off the oxide layer just enough, and then the solder will wet the tin foil. You probably make a hole in the tin foil, don't worry about it, it'll still work. Now you can solder the wire, that's it. That's one. I'll put the other electrode kind of near it. I mean the other uh, wire near it. Yeah, you wait. Flux, Get the flux coming out of the solder. Well, that'll show up. Put a lot of solder in there. Move the soldering, scrape the tin foil a little bit, and voila, it wets it. Oops. And that is it. tape it together with some masking tape. Oops. Well, you know what? I'm not even going to tape it. You got the idea. Let's just demonstrate it. I'll hook it up to the uh, oscillator again here.
that's all there is to it. Now let me show you what I'm, I'm doing with this uh, Arduino. I made, this is my, my Halloween relay sequencer. I made a little shield, a relay shield, you can just buy one. But I have, I had these relays, so I made one. See what I'm doing here? This is gonna have 120 volts, so I'm, I'm scraping the uh, pads away to give some, some distance. It's probably a better idea if you buy a commercial one that's good. <laughs> So this is the power input, and here are the three capacitive sensor inputs that I have. And actually, you can see the uh, reference capacitors and just relay simple re relay drivers. Okay, now let me plug this in. wrong here. Oh yeah, I have to program the uh... okay, there we go. Sequence. Oh, delay. Sequence. There you go. That's one way to uh trigger your Halloween sequence. <laughs> now what I'm going to do with this is this one has the porch light. So when you sequence, when you trigger the sequence, the porch light turns off. The black lights turn on, which reveal the, the horrible Cthulhu-esque symbols that are going to paper my front door. It flashes the lightning with a strobe light. And one of these relays will will trigger. I have one of these uh, these Home Depot pictures. And what this has is a bunch of LEDs in it and, a, and speakers. And I modified it so that I have a, a switch closer will trigger it. I'll sh I'll show you that in a minute. Now, if you do make one of these, be safe with it. Use a small fuse. I mean, for lights, you probably can get away with a one amp fuse. Uh, connect the earth ground to the logic ground so that the pressure plates are not ever connected to the high volt. And plug this into a GFI, a ground fault interrupter socket.